In today's video, we are going to explore best Sri Aurobindo thought-provoking quotes about spiritual experience. Let's get started. The first and the most important thing is to know that life is one and immortal. Only the forms, countless in number, are transient and brittle. The life everlasting is independent of any form, but manifests itself in all forms. Life then does not die, but the forms are dissolved. The progressive growth of the finite consciousness of man towards this self, towards the universal, the eternal, the infinite, in a word, his growth into spiritual consciousness by the development of his ordinary ignorant natural being into an illumined divine nature. This is for Indian thinking the significance of life and the aim of human existence. The soul in man is greater than his fate. The spiritual path is one of falling on your face, getting up, brushing yourself off, turning and looking sheepishly at God, and then taking the next step. The supreme end is the freedom of the spirit. The supreme state of human love is the unity of one soul and two bodies. A thought is an arrow shot at the truth. It can hit a point, but not cover the whole target. But the archer is too well satisfied with his success to ask anything farther. All existence is a manifestation of God. The only work that spiritually purifies us is that which is done without personal motives. The whole world yearns after freedom, yet each creature is in love with his chains. This is the first paradox and inextricable knot of our nature. There are four great events in history, the siege of Troy, the life and crucifixion of Christ, the exile of Krishna in Vrindavan, and the colloquy on the field of Kurukshetra. The siege of Troy created Hellas, the exile in Vrindavan created devotional religion, for before there was only meditation and worship. Christ from his cross humanized Europe the colloquy at Kurukshetra will yet liberate humanity. All fanaticism is false because it is a contradiction of the very nature of God and of truth. Truth cannot be shut up in a single book, Bible or Veda or Quran, or in a single religion. The divine being is eternal, universal and infinite and cannot be the sole property of the Muslims or of the Semitic religions only. Those that happen to be in a line from the Bible and to have Jewish or Arabian prophets for their founders. But few are those who tread the sunlit path. Only the pure in soul can walk in light. By our stumbling, the world is perfected. Death is but changing of our robes to wait in wedding garments at the Eternal's gate. Delight is the secret. Learn of pure delight and thou shalt learn of God. What then was the commencement of the whole matter? Existence that multiplied itself for sheer delight of being and plunged into numberless trillions of forms so that it might find itself 
innumerably. Genius discovers a system. Average talent stereotypes it till it is shattered by fresh genius. He who chooses the infinite has been chosen by the infinite. Hinduism gave itself no name because it set itself no sectarian limits. It claimed no universal adhesion, asserted no soul infallible dogma, set up no single narrow path or gate of salvation. It was less a creed or cult than a continuously enlarging tradition of the God-ward endeavor of the human spirit. An immense, many-sided and many-staged provision for a spiritual self-building and self-finding. It had some right to speak of itself by the only name it knew, the eternal religion, Santana Dharma. If a religion is not universal, it cannot be eternal. A narrow religion, a sectarian religion, an exclusive religion can live only for a limited time and a limited purpose. Is it true that existence consists only in the action of energy? Or is it not rather that energy is an output of existence? Life is life, whether in a cat or dog or man. There is no difference there between a cat or a man. The idea of difference is a human conception for man's own advantage. My God is love and sweetly suffers all. My love is not a hunger of the heart. My love is not a craving of the flesh. It came to me from God, to God returns. One who loves God finds the object of his love everywhere. Our human knowledge is a candle burnt on a dim altar to a sun vast truth. Outside and above the mind, there is the play of a consciousness, which is lighted by the higher truth. But man is not conscious of it, and of that he has to be conscious. Peace is the first condition, without which nothing else can be stable. Religions, creeds, and forms are only a characteristic outward sign of the spiritual impulsion, and religion itself is the intensive action by which it tries to find its inward force. Its expansive movement comes in the thought which it throws out on life, the ideals which open up new horizons and which the intellect accepts and life labors to assimilate. Sin and virtue are a game of resistance. We play with God in his efforts to draw us towards perfection. Sit in meditation, but do not think. Look only at your mind. You will see thoughts coming into it. Before they can enter, throw these away from your mind till your mind is capable of entire silence. Suffering makes us capable of the full force of the master of delight. It makes us capable also to bear the utter play of the master of power. Pain is the key that opens the gates of strength. It is the high road that leads to the city of beatitude. The anarchic is the true divine state of man in the end as in the beginning but in between it would lead us straight to the devil and his kingdom.
The atheist is God playing at hide and seek with himself. The consciousness of the seer is a greater power for knowledge than the consciousness of the thinker. The perceptual power of the inner sight is greater and more direct than the perceptual power of thought. The divine truth is greater than any religion or creed or scripture or idea or philosophy. The existence of poverty is the proof of an unjust and ill-organized society, and our public charities are but the first tardy awakening in the conscience of a robber. The first principle of true teaching is that nothing can be taught. The fly that touches honey cannot use its wings, so too the soul that clings to spiritual sweetness ruins its freedom and hinders contemplation. There is nothing mind can do that cannot be better done in the mind's immobility and thought-free stillness. When mind is still, then truth gets her chance to be heard in the purity of the silence. They proved to me by convincing reasons that God does not exist. Afterwards, I saw God, for he came and embraced me. And now what am I to believe? The reasoning of others or my own experience? Truth is what the soul has seen and experienced. The rest is appearance, prejudice, and opinion. To listen to some devout people, one would imagine that God never laughs. True knowledge is not attained by thinking. It is what you are. It is what you become. Watch the two indignantly righteous. Before long, you will find them committing or condoning the very offense which they have so fiercely censured. We cannot afford to raise any institution to the rank of a fetish. To do so would be simply to become the slaves of our own machinery. When I had the dividing reason, I shrank from many things. After I had lost it in sight, I hunted through the world for the ugly and the repellent, but I could no longer find them. While doing work, if the mind continues to be active, let it be so, but there must be at the same time a capacity for silence. Yoga is a generic name for any discipline by which one attempts to pass out of the limits of one's ordinary mental consciousness into a greater spiritual consciousness. The practice of yoga brings us face to face with the extraordinary complexity of our own being. The yoga we practice is not for ourselves alone but for the divine. Its aim is to work out the will of the divine in the world, to effect a spiritual transformation, and to bring down a divine nature and a divine life into the mental, vital, and physical nature and life of humanity. Its object is not personal mukti, although mukti is a necessary condition of the yoga but the liberation and transformation of the human being. It is not personal Ananda, but the bringing down of the divine Ananda, Christ's kingdom of heaven, our Satya Yuga, upon the earth. Please let us know your favorite quotes from these best Sri Aurobindo thought-provoking quotes about spiritual experience in the comment section. 
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.